why do I talk about jealousy and envy and miserable people so much? What happened to me? Am I hurting? Is there something wrong with me? Am I traumatized? Am I healing? Am I broken? I say that because I'm responding to the comment, just one comment, thankfully, of all the thousands of views, I appreciate you, that I've gotten. There was one person, and I was waiting for you, who said, you're speaking from a broken place. You are trying to mask being encouraging under being bitter and hurt. Ask God to help you heal. Some baloney to that effect is what they said to me in the comment. So am I hurting? Am I not healed? I am speaking to you from a place that you are not accustomed to hearing. I'm speaking to you all from a place of being an authentic human being who has experienced human experiences as we all have. You see, that's the one thing. And I thank God for that comment because that young lady further proved my point of how women can be. They don't want to understand truth sometimes and they don't want to talk about the uncomfortable. And in order to negate that fact and get away from the subject at hand, they will look at the person delivering the message and say, you must be this, you must be that. Instead of listening for understanding, they like to glaze over the topic at hand and come after you. That is something else that miserable, jealous women, women who are not healed, not broken, will absolutely do. Instead of taking the information for what it is, they try to come at the person giving the information because God forbid you're saying something that makes sense. They can't receive it. They got to find something. I'll give you an example of this. I saw on TikTok, a young lady was very happy. I think she's 26 year old, 26 years old. She just became a lawyer and she was showing off, you know, she was getting sworn in as a lawyer, you know, the youngest one, she's black, she's beautiful, she looked nice. And somebody put in the comment section, she, they, they asked her, where did you get your dress from? And she said, Bloomingdale's. Do you know, there was one miserable person in the comments they took time out of their life to do a Google search on her dress and found out that the dress was not offered at Bloomingdale's. It was actually offered at Kohl's. And they felt the need to get into that young lady's comment section on her most important day and tell her, you didn't have to lie that your dress came from Kohl's or something to that effect. She's getting sworn in as a 26 year old attorney. And yet that person took about five to 10 minutes out of their day to do a Google search to prove to the lady that your dress is cute, but you lied about where you got it from. That's the reason why I do these videos on jealousy and envy because of things like that. But to answer the initial question, Am I hurting in some way? No, I'm not hurting for nothing. My life is at peace. I, I'm, I thank God for where I am right now. But I haven't always been this way. And I thank God for my testimony because that's the reason why I can come to you all and give you these videos about the experiences that I have had and observed so that you will be able to recognize the signs that I did not earlier on. See, people are not accustomed to individuals sharing real life experiences. And when we share real life experiences, instead of taking that information for what it is and applying it to your own life and using it as a warning for yourself, women who are miserable, envious, jealous, and just overall toxic will take that as an opportunity to pick you apart and find something negative to say. That's the reason why I say into the most nearest future, I will continue to make these type of videos because of things like that. I don't know what it is, if there's some kind of like it's, it's a defense mechanism or if it's something that's missing in their own lives where they just feel like they got to say something, or do something. And believe you me, I'm no longer bothered by those kind of things. I expect it. I accept it. And I use it as 
inspiration for my content and I also use it as a learning tool for the people closest to me, i.e. my daughter. I thank God for everything that I've went through, um, be it the jealousy, the envy, dealing with women treating me different kind of ways, because not only did it make me stronger and more resilient, it helped me to build up my confidence so much so that I don't care about things like that. I have a shirt, I have merchandise that says unbothered, you all need to be purchasing that, by the way. It's in our merchant shop. And I'm going to leave the link in the description. Y'all need to purchase some of this merchandise because I literally, unbothered is what I am. But when people don't understand that you can be unbothered by something and still be aware and bring awareness, they think that you're speaking from a broken place. There's so many deep, shallow people on the internet. It's just completely just uncanny to me and i also want to say the reason why i make these videos and where it all started is when shanquilla robinson the issue and the the thing the tragedy that happened to her when she went on that girl's trip with her friends in mexico i believe and she had just opened up a hair salon i believe she's been doing well but she opened up her own hair salon and she's really like was going up and she shared that information with friends, with her friends. She thought they were her friends. She shared that information. And they all went on this girl's trip to Mexico. And I am sure that young lady thought she was just celebrating her great time with her friends. She did not know that that would be her last time here. She didn't know that she was in the midst of snakes. And I don't wanna to speak too much about her specifically out of respect for the family, but everybody has been speaking about her and I'm speaking from a place of love because it is horrible what happened to her. And when I heard that, I broke down in tears and I am trying my best right now to not break down in tears because of hearing what happened to her and seeing clips of the video of what happened to her that is why I started. Ooh. I do not want to be this real with y'all online. <laughs> but that is where my first video on jealousy came from. When I saw what happened to her. And I'm just like, God, what is wrong with people? <laughs> What is wrong with people? What is wrong with us as women that we would do this to one another? So it's not so much about me. Thank God I have not experienced jealousy and envy to that extent. But when I saw that, that's when my first video was sparked. That got over 74,000 views. And I wasn't doing it for the views. I had no idea. That video was going to take off like that. I was speaking from a place of the mother on the inside of me. Because my daughter, you know, she's a, a teen, 17 years old. And I'm just like, you know, I want her to have that inside meter. That intuition. Uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. Try the spirits to know when you're around people that don't mean you any good. And to use wisdom and discernment to not share with people who don't mean you well. And to know when people are really your friends and when they're not. So if I'm hurting from anything, I hurt from seeing what other women go through at the hands of people they think are their friends. Me, I have a handful of people I call close but I don't keep too many people close to me because if you say anything, I will say a little bit of fear that I don't want to go through all of that. At this point in my life, I'm almost 40 years old. You know, I don't need to have bestie, bestie. You know, it's nice if you have it. I have one bestie, but um, I don't need all that. So the hurt you might have heard or seen is because I hurt for the young ladies. And she's not the only one that happened to, but she's the name that sticks in my memory. <laughs> Sorry for that. This is just real. A little bit too real. Look what y'all did to me. <laughs> Let me sip my coffee. So yeah. That's where that comes from. Um, 
We just got to do better as women. We got to learn how to celebrate one another. We got to learn how to really genuinely love one another and be happy. Like, sis had her own hair salon. That means she's your friend. Discount on hairstyles, you know. And I'm not saying she should have offered. I'm just saying the way we look at our friend's successes, we need to look at it as in, you know, I'm associated with somebody that's successful. I'm associated with somebody that's coming up in life. Don't be threatened by that. Be happy and feel privileged that you're connected to an individual that's doing well. And many people, many women don't see it that way. They look at their girlfriends level up as a threat to them. And that's just horrible. Yeah, that really sat on me and weighs on me still. When I think about it, it makes me tear up. It makes me upset because it doesn't have to be that way. Stop being a hater. Stop being jealous. Love other women and love what they're doing. Love how they look. Stop being jealous of another woman's looks, another woman's hair, another woman's whatever. It's just weird to me that you can hate another woman that you don't even know sometimes. All because of what you perceive as perfection in her. And a lot of the women who are jealous of some of these other women, the women they're jealous of are as sweet as pie. They would tell them and help them and be there for them and have a great time with them. But because a lot of women possess a jealous, demonic, wicked spirit within themselves, they don't see what they're missing out on. They don't see that they're missing out on having true, lasting, healthy relationships with other women all because they can't deal with their own insecurities and instead they choose to put their toxicity and their insecurity on another woman and lash out at her. These girls that she was dealing with, they probably had a lot of talents, a lot of skills, everything. They probably were also talented, but because they were just so enraged at this young lady's confidence and her opportunities and I'm sure a little bit of naivety within her, they took advantage of that. And that's another reason why I come on here and speak the way I speak. This is a femininity, womanhood, and life advice channel. And unfortunately, a lot of the things we go through as women are not always pretty. Um, it's not always just la 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 la. I live my life in la 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 mode. <laughs> However, with that, on the inside, I have that wisdom and discernment and that's why I put these videos out because I want you to live a free flowy feminine existence, but you cannot do that being naive. I saw another comment of a lady who said, well, I try to look at everybody as a child of God. So I don't worry about those things. I understand where she's coming from. That's that, uh, you know, Christian cliche that we like to throw out. I used to throw it out too when I was earlier in my walk with God. But when I really got into scripture and saw what it said about jealousy, envy, and wicked demonic spirits, I started to realize that not everybody is for God. And saying such is a little naive. When you assume that other people are all so kind and sweet and nice because you're kind and nice, that's naive. And being feminine, being wise, being a woman is not naive. You have to recognize that a lot of people are wonderful, but there are a lot of people who are rotten. And while you can't worry about that, you absolutely need to be aware. I don't worry about anything. I talk to you all like this, but in my day to day, I'm not worrying about this stuff. I speak to people. I'm kind to people. I just was at the nail salon and a lady walked in. She didn't speak. She didn't say nothing other than pedicure, manicure, pedicure, manicure. You know, <laughs> she was very manly in her approach. Very mean, not any good morning, not small talk, nothing. Just went there, sat there and yeah. So when she left, the lady who was doing my nails told me, she's very mean. That's why I don't say anything to her. She's very mean. I, and I got that from her. Just miserable for no reason. To you warriors who like to say, you don't know what somebody is going through. You don't. But that doesn't give people a right to mistreat you and mishandle you and treat you however. And you don't have to take it. If they're having a miserable morning, as my girl Tabitha Brown likes to say, if you can't be happy, something to the effect... Don't go around messing up somebody else's day. Something like that she'd be saying. It's self-control. We all have control of our own emotions. It's not our responsibility to make other people be okay with themselves. You have to have that on the inside. I saw another comment. I'm responding. I'm just, this is just going from what I've seen. 
I gave you my ER story about how the nurse was very nasty and I left because I didn't want to put my life at risk because of her nastiness. Somebody said if it was me, I would have asked her, how's your day going? Are you having a bad day? I came to the ER because I'm in pain. I'm not feeling well. That's not my responsibility to tell that nurse or coddle her and therapize her. That's a word I just made up. It's not my job to go there and be her mentor and counsel her and say, are you having a bad day? I'm in pain. I was having one of the worst acid reflux flare-ups I've ever had. My whole side felt like it was falling out. Not that y'all need to know that, but my whole side, I was in pain, hurting. And you say that I should have asked her, was she having a great day? No, she should have came to work with the intention to do her job and to the best of her ability. And if she was having a bad day, feminine discernment tells you, I'm going to call out today because I'm not feeling this. Or I'm going to ask my supervisor if I can take a break or something because I just can't do this. I need a mental moment. Feminine wisdom and energy understands that you must Focus on the things that are impacting you in the moment. And if she was having a bad day, that was her responsibility to not show up for work and put her mental wellness first. See, that's another thing I teach on this channel. You have to understand, it's nobody's responsibility to keep you happy, to coddle you, and to make you be a woman or to make you do anything. You have to want that and know that for yourself as a woman. If you're having a bad day, do things that make your day better. Don't depend on somebody else to do it. See, I know this channel is a little bit too real, but I don't know what to tell you, you know? So I just wanted to come on and say that I'm not hurting. I am hurting for the women who experience these, these, who experience these things. I experienced this stuff when I was younger, like late teens, early 20s. But further I got in life, you know, I experienced it, but it didn't bother me so much, especially in the workplace. I just don't care. I thank God for my life blessed for it blessed for the experience but i don't worry about those things now i'm in teaching mode where i teach you all what to watch out for but this is a video on clarification about jealousy and envy and where this all started and i'm glad that you all are benefiting from these videos and seeing them as valuable and i pray and hope that you will continue to protect yourselves from jealous envious spirits and you protect yourself from becoming jealous and envious because there's no reason to you as a woman always has a choice and you can always do better and be better than where you are right now all right don't be a hater it's not cute all right <laughs> like and subscribe to the channel and share this content hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. And if you watch this until the very end, I absolutely adore you. Leave the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.